fish on. Good one. Another Whoa. nice one. Wow, wow. wow. There you go. Oh my gosh. Kuda's coming, Kuda's coming. Oh my gosh, Kuda. Oh Come on, Barracuda, stay it's away. It's a race, it's a race. It's me against Barracuda. Woo! One of the coolest parts about Middle Key is that you have a beach right there in front of your house and on the beach there's bonefish everywhere. Almost every morning we would walk outside and see these bonefish just hanging out on the beach. We got some bonefish right here, right off the edge of Middle Key. And uh, I mean, so close. We had some conch left over in the refrigerator that we were going to eat, but I'd rather feed it to a bonefish. And the bonefish were just sitting there swimming along the beach and you would see one at a time swimming through there. A little tail kind of pop up out of the water and wag around as the fish is kind of rooting through the sand. So I followed the bonefish out onto the flat and I made a cast out in front of them and something started to pick it up. There he is. Got him. <laughs> oh, it's a cuda jumping. It's not what I was looking for. And it's actually one of the worst things that you can catch when you're fishing for bonefish because bonefish hate kudas because kudas and sharks are always coming up on the flats trying to eat them. So I'm sure that got the bonefish spooked a little bit. These guys will run the, uh, usually run the bonefish off, but this one's not very big. He's smaller than the bonefish we were just seeing, but they'll come in here and they'll eat the bonefish, the bigger ones. We'll go ahead and send him away. There you go. Goodbye. So I decided to go ahead and change things up and start looking for some crabs since the conch wasn't working. I found one or two little white crabs and that was the ticket I thought to get in the bonefish. These bonefish here are smart at the house because uh, everybody's fishing for them. I got this crab that just doesn't want to let go of my hand here. I'm going to hook him up and see if the bonefish will eat that. I'd rather have them a, about twice that size because these are big bonefish. I mean, these are like eight, 10 pounders rolling through here. And then we saw a bonefish swimming through the water at us. So I flipped my crab way out in front of him. I reeled it back and dropped it right off to the side of him to see if he would see it. And then that bonefish went down and grabbed that crab and started crunching on it. So I reeled down and set the hook and he took off like a light. Fish on. Oh, it's a monster bonefish too. Woo -hoo -hoo. Guys, look at that thing go. Got him. That's what it took. We were trying to get him on the conch and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. I caught one of those little white crabs and he is a mile away. He's down there by those buoys now. Holy cow. That's a monster bonefish. Absolute monster. <laughs> That's about a 10 pounder right there on that little white crab. He hit that thing about 15 feet in front of me. Doesn't get any better than that. Holy cow, talk about, oh! Oh, I thought he came off for a minute, he rubbed the ledge. I thought he just broke my line. He's all the way over on the deep side. He's down in this trench by the, uh, by the boat lift. Just trying to keep my line high to keep him off of anything out there that he can cut me off on. There is a lot of mangroves here, and mangrove shoots, but we finally got the right one, guys. Wow, what a hit and he is just ripping it up in here. Seeing a big single bonefish is almost always a lot harder to catch than a school of bonefish because when there's a school of them, there's a little bit of competition there. They're gonna fight the other fish for that crab if there's just one crab walking around the flat. All right, here we go, guys. I'm gonna bring him right up here. Let's see if we can get him landed. Look at that thing. Gosh, right here where we're staying at Middle K. Guest house is right there, the main house is right there, less than 50 yards away, and you can catch these just absolute monster bonefish right off the beach here. What I got this one on is a crab. It didn't want to have anything to do with the conch, which was surprising, but they're feeding on these little white crabs in here. Found one for bait, caught them, and it worked out. What they're doing in here actually with these crabs in the sand, the crabs will scoot across the sand and will dig underneath it. When they dig underneath it, these bonefish get in there and they just start blowing sand and, and uh, water and stuff in and out right there and pushing those crabs out of there and they suck them out, right up out of those holes. Just a game fish, of course, no good to eat, but they're a blast to catch on spin and tackle. Well, we haven't even started our day yet. We're supposed to be going out and doing a little diving. We decided to come out here right after breakfast and uh, try to catch one of these things and it worked. 
<laughs> what a great start to the morning. Okay guys, the fish is doing great. He ate that crab like there was no tomorrow. And I'm not gonna keep him out of the water any longer than I need to, so we're gonna go ahead and release him. Just send him right back the way he came from. I'll give you one more look at him before I send him out, actually. Gosh, what a trophy. You want a trophy bonefish, this is the place to get him. And there he goes. When we were going for the conks, all we were really doing was just driving around and looking for a big grass flat with some conch on it. That's pretty much what you do in the Bahamas when you want to find conch. After we found the conch, Louisa got set up and got ready to go in the water. It didn't take long to start getting a bunch of conch in the boat. There were conch everywhere. Louisa was going down and sometimes grabbing two and three at a time. And then I went down and grabbed one. And then I went down and grabbed another one. At one point, I had four or five conks in my hands all at once. It was a beautiful area. It was probably only between three and five feet of water, so it wasn't hard to dive at all. The conch were abundant. It was very clear. There was no danger of sharks or anything like that. So it was a really nice afternoon dive. We were just trying to get enough conch for us and the crew and the people over at the house there on Middle Key. They were kind of hidden in the grass there, but you know, they're easy to find. It's not really difficult to load up on Kong. And then Louisa went down and grabbed another one. And after we felt that we've had plenty of Kong, we went ahead and put them all in the boat and got ready to head back to Middle Key and clean them up. We ended up keeping about 12 conch or so, even though we saw so many more than that. We got just enough to make some cracked conch and some conch salad the next day. So we ran back out between a couple islands where there was a nice cut, and we started chumming the water, hoping to get some mutton snapper. All right guys, so we just finished getting some conch and things, and we cleaned them up. We got a bunch of conch slop here that we're gonna use for chum. We also took these shells and stuffed them full of some of that conch slop. And what we're going to do is kind of use them like little chum bags that will sit on the bottom. So we just drop this stuff down to the bottom and it'll sit there and all that stuff we shoved up in it, the uh, bait fish and the smaller snapper and things are going to come around and be pecking at that shell and that's going to draw in the larger mutton snappers. We basically just keep a chum bag right here by us over the edge of the boat. At the same time we're taking all this slop and stuff, this is going to be bait but it, it, we're also using it for chum. So we're just bringing the mutton snapper in and you know whatever else we can come up with. So hopefully we'll uh, get something big here. We'll see. We've never fished this area before. It's just a little cut here uh, between Eleuthera and uh, the other island over there. So let's we'll see what we can do. Shortly after we put the chum in the water, there were yellow tails everywhere. Right off the bat, Louisa hooked a nice yellow tail. Sean. There we go. Good job. Woo! Chum definitely works. Yeah, it does. Oh, look at that. Uh huh. Big pile of weeds oh, and a yellowtail. Yeah, yellowtail. <laughs> yellowtail with a beard. There you go. <laughs> Good size yellowtail. Too. Oh, yeah, it is. Ooh, oh, these man, are that's good to eat. Delicious. Woo! Came off. That was easy. Right after she put that yellowtail on the angle, I hooked into a pretty good fish. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that might be a little bit better. <laughs> nice. It's one of the reasons I like that conch so much. Those little fish will just sit down there and peck away at it, and then the bigger one comes along and nails it. And I think that's what we got is a good mutton snapper right there. Look at him. Wow, nice one. All right, is that a grouper? Oh, we got a shark on him. We got a shark on him. Well, that's a mutton, all right. 
You got a shark right behind him. Woo, there we go. That's what we were after, guys, right there. It was so cool to have such a nice mutton snapper in the boat so quick in the little amount of time that we've taken to fish. The conch worked. That's what that basically, actually, no, sorry, this one was on the squid. I'd actually just swapped the conch out because we had a little bit of squid, and it definitely worked. Not a monster, but plenty big enough to eat. I knew they were down there. <laughs> yeah, they are. Check that out, Louisa. Look at the colors wow. on that. Pretty ones. I like the younger ones too. They just get all lit up. They're a lot prettier than those huge ones. Get this guy on ice to go with your yellow tail. You can have some yellow tail and some mutton snapper. Yes. <laughs> Good fish. You have to understand, we don't know this area at all. We're not familiar with it. We're just taking guesses, trying to catch the fish. And to be able to put a mutton snapper like that in the boat right off the bat, just by winging it, is not too bad. You know, we were pretty happy about that. All right. Got that hook out. There's another look at that mutton snapper. That's what we were after. It's not easy getting fish out in an area that you don't know very well. But uh, nice thing about the Bahamas is there's an abundance of fish out here. So you can always bump into them somewhere. We got them right here in a little cut where all the boats are passing through. Fish on. Tearing it up on the bottom. Woo! I love bottom fishing. Yeah. Love it. Doing good at it. Oh, look at that critter. Look at my fish. Now yeah. that one will make it. We just had a big barracuda come after my uh, mutton snapper. Another small mutton. I can't believe how many little mutton snapper Louisa was pulling up. All right, I'm gonna release this little guy. Here he there goes. Here he goes. Mm, that's bigger than I thought. Came up. Oh, just stronger. Oh, it's a big one. The, the little baby mutton. A little bigger than mine. <laughs> yeah, lots of little guys. That's what happens when you drop one back in the yellowtail line. You get these guys coming up in it as well. The fish that we were catching weren't huge, but it was a very consistent bite. A very fun afternoon. Whoop. And almost let himself go. There he goes, back in the water. <laughs> That's where we let him go anyway. And then Louisa caught another yellowtail. Good fish. Ah, nice, Lenward. Louisa. You got that one right away, huh? Nice yeah. big fatty, too. Yeah, she is. Look at that thing. Woo. Wow, look at this big flag. Wow. <laughs> Very nice one. And all I was doing is that I wasn't using a sinker. I was just drifting my line with the chum. And I got a big yellowtail. The yellowtail were a really good size too. I was surprised to be catching yellowtail in such shallow water right there on the inside. We weren't even on the outside where the reef is. We're just kind of like inside on the bay area. Fish on. Good one. Another oh. nice one. Wow, wow, wow. There you go. Oh my gosh. Kuda's coming, Kuda's coming. Oh my gosh, Kuda. There he goes. Oh, he got it. He got it. He oh, got no. it. He got it. You got half of my fish. I got tagged. All oh, right. We got competition. After catching about another half a dozen snapper or so, Louisa hooked into something a little bit bigger. That's a good one. Come on, Barracuda, stay it's away. It's a race. It's a race. It's me against the Barracuda. Woo! Yep. Yep. There it is. Oh, Nassau grouper. grouper. Nice Nassau wow. grouper. That's a good size one. Beautiful. <laughs> There you go. Pretty fish. Gosh. So awesome to see all these all types of grouper here too. Yeah, it's about as pretty as you get right there. Little baby Nassau grouper. Nice. <laughs> Put up a good fight. Look, yeah. That was a very nice sized Nassau grouper that Louisa caught. And even though it would have been big enough to keep in the Bahamas, we just didn't think it was big enough on our standards, especially since we had so many fish in the cooler. So we went ahead and let that one go as well. Gonna go ahead and put him back in the water. Hopefully he gets down quick. Nice. Hopefully he gets down quick. Oh! Oh! We lost him anyway. Reef fishing is some of my favorite type of fishing to do because you just never know what you're gonna catch. I mean, we were catching all kinds of stuff. That was also a very pleasant way to spend the afternoon. There's just so many things to do there in Middle K. 
from the lobster to the conch to the mutton snapper fishing to swimming with turtles, just so many different things going on there. And it's been an amazing trip up to this point. Every day has been awesome. Yeah.